flicking through the pages I've forgotten every word The lines are meaningless The photographs are blurred When I close the book The story opens again Fabian Clover's date. Um, we're look, talking about the new album. Look, how does the new album, how do you think the new album relates to Rejoice I'm Dead, its predecessor? Well, I mean, when we, when we went into doing Rejoice I'm Dead, I think, you know, we, we didn't know what it was going to be like. We didn't know um, how, how it was going to sound. And we were sort of, we weren't sceptical, we were very excited about doing it, but it felt like, you know, this was us sort of saying goodbye to David. And the way it came together was us trying to see, well, can, can, can this, can we continue this? Is, this? is this feasible or is it bogus? And the only way we knew it was gonna work is if we made a, an album that we could sort of believe in and could play live and that people would also respond to. But, um, which they did, you know, and it was amazing. I mean, it's the response that Rejoice I'm Dead had was, just completely unexpected. We, we had no idea how people were going to take it. I mean, you know, there's there's certain elements that maybe Gong hadn't, you know, areas that Gong hadn't gone to before. But then, in, you know, once we finished that album, we were touring it. Then we started having ideas about what, you know, what the next one was going to sound like. And, you know, a great deal of what happens during the set involves improvising and you know often often improvising at the end of you know you'll get to the end of one chorus of a song and then you've got x amount of time where you can go anywhere and then there'll be a cue someone will do a cue and then you're back into the tune again now you're doing that night after night in front of you know different crowds different countries and each night you know you, you'll start exploring something further and it was some of the pieces were getting more exploratory and more sort of atonal and more far out and just completely kind of, you know, crazy. And then, you know, each evening after the gig, you'll talk about it, you go, God, man, that middle bit of Cellini tonight, when we went to, oh yeah, that was good. Then the next night, <laughs> you'll, you'll go even more further out. And then that was when you start formulating, well, God, wouldn't it be good to take some of the, these sort of ideas and harness them into that? And over the course of two years of touring this thing, um, we just started f formulating a plan of the kind of album we wanted to make. So even before we started writing it, we sort of knew what was gonna what was gonna be on it, you know, vibe wise, and what wasn't gonna be on this record. So we kind of then that's pretty much how it worked. And then everything grew from us being together. So all the pieces were written, you know, when we were in together in one room. It wasn't like whereas the previous album, someone had sort of had some ideas and brought them in. So okay, I've got this idea, and then we developed them. This this was all stuff that developed when we were together in one room. So it really felt like. What I think is uh, as we play all, all the, those two, two years together, then we feel like a band playing together. This is why we decided to compose everything all together in this new album, because it was, I think we were achieving a kind of music, a kind of sound that pleased everybody in the band. So this is why I think we decided not to have individual parts, but uh, compose it previously, but composed all together like a big jam or... So from going from individuals contributing sections to whole songs worked on together? Stuff coming up from... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All the ideas kind of were generated within, within the same space. And then we kind of worked on some of them, well, some of the tracks for six, seven months trying to kind of work out which bits were working, which bits weren't. I'll go to that because that, I think it's the most interesting. The, the opening number is 20 and a bit minutes yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, that one took a while. <laughs> Um, I'm assuming that that's written, been, that's emerged from just the scenarios you've been outlining, Carver's different areas, different sections, and has then been assembled in a new, in an order, or was, was it? Um, no, I mean, that started with a riff, and that was that was before we um, went out to China last year. We just had this that that riff, yeah. and so we just and we just. God, we played that incessantly. <laughs> we just played that riff on its own. And it was just like, God, at first, like, this riff can go on for 10 minutes. Um, and Literally then, just repeat. Just playing yeah, the riff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, the and then we started, as we, as we started playing, then sort of cutting bits out. Da, da, da. And then separately, 
completely separate to that, I had this idea, I had this sort of setting on my uh, pedals with this tremolo. And for me, tremolo is instant psychedelic, uh, 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 it's total, totally psychedelic. So I just had this idea that wouldn't it be good to have, uh, 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 and getting the horns to do this sort of, uh, you know, minimalist kind of ba 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 against it. And they, they were meant sort of idea for two tracks, but then as these, this riff just grew and grew, and then that whole intro section, which we were working on separately, we're like, wait a minute, that, that could go, yeah, that could yeah. be the, and, and then at some point, quite so, a while so, so in. The intro section was always for the song, always for no, the No, no, it was just an idea that wouldn't it be nice to have, no, 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 have this drone, ga 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 drone in for Ian to, it, I heard it's just like constant pulsing, but then it grew into what the intro section was. But the, the piece just sort of set, kept growing and we kept pruning it and reordering it. And we, it, at some point we were like, this is side one of the album, isn't it? You know, and, then, and, then once, <laughs> and then once we knew it was that, once we knew that it was like, yeah, fucking come on. 20, first track, 20 minutes, let's do this. Yeah, 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 of yeah, course, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is the idea. And then once we knew we had that, then it was like, oh, come on, this is, you know, this is going to be great. I mean, it sounds original. Oh, good, yeah. This is, this is the, the, the thing I tried to say. Hey, I think this album's a lot more focused as well. It's kind of, it's a holistic, is that the right word? Kind of, it all, it's all encompassing. Yes. So, so there's themes that appear in one track that will appear in another one in maybe a slightly different form. Or there's certain sections that... Uh, that are kind of hinted at in one piece and then they'll appear in a, in, in a fuller way in another track. Which, uh... And I want to say to, uh, to others, say, please pl uh, play like this or like that. It, it, everyone plays exactly what we are thinking inside to, to complement the, what the other is playing. You've said, uh, it's been quite public in, in the, in the pre-publicity pre to the album, the word psychedelic comes out a lot. And I just wondered, does it, do you have to have a? It's a I would say it's a, a very misabused word. Oh, yeah, do you all yeah. have to have? Do you all have, all have the same vision in terms of what you want from a psychedelic record? Is it music for people on drugs? Is it to recreate a drug experience? Is it truly soul revealing? Well, I mean, for me, I mean, mu music, music is psychedelic. I mean, full stop. <laughs> and um, I just think. You know, music is the, I think it's the highest of the arts and I think it's it's the best thing we've got as human beings. I think that, you know, we have this somehow through this limited bandwidth that we're able to hear and who knows what the fuck is going on above and below what we're able to hear, but through this limited bandwidth of what we're able to hear, we have managed to harness um, sort of sculpt sound waves and put them into order, make order out of sound waves in a way that seems to light up a circuit in the brain. The same circuit I, I, I will offer, mm. lit by psychedelics, that music is able to light a circuit in the brain that is not accessible, or at least in my brain, has not been accessible through any, through, through any other means. And I remember the first time when I was about nine or ten there was a stray cats record and there was a particular bit which i was really into stray cats <laughs> uh, yeah it did on the second album there was this particular oh, really bit were into the yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's this little bit in the middle of that lasts about two seconds in the middle of this tune little miss prissy where the guitar goes down and sort of does this slidey thing against the the rhythm and when i heard it it, it was just like fucking hell what it was like something supernatural had happened, like the room changed colour, and I kept putting the needle back, and it kept having the same effect. I'm going wobbly, thing. It kept having the same effect on me, like this. What? And I, it was like something supernatural had happened, and it's like God. And it's taken me years to realise music is the closest like thing to magic. I think it's it's completely transformative, and a, I know I've gone slightly off there, but I'm going to come. To, a concert is a totally transformative experience. And if, what is magic if not? the transformation of one thing into another. Shamanic. Shamanic. You're, you're yeah, the yeah. Shaman leading we're, 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 we're trying to bring about a, a, a transformative, you know, a, 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 something that changes people and changes us, you know. And it's, I don't think it's pretentious to say that because done right, it does that. So for me, yeah. whatever that effect was that I now think of as being psychedelic, and no one would think of these, think of the stray cats, but it's two psychedelic seconds of the stray cats. 
was like, I just want to make music that makes that feeling happen. But I want to make it happen over a much longer period of time. And I want to have a sort of release and, you know, let, let people have it and really try and find that. And it, it wasn't until much later when I got understood about psychedelics and psychedelic music and realized how it all sort of mapped in together. And so for me, the best music is psychedelic. And we wanted to just do all the things that create that state, all the details and all the repeating themes and things coming back sort of, you know, ideas coming back again and things playing against each other. And this is, you know, that's my idea of sort of psychedelic music, really. So can I bring me around to the, the title of the album? Because I was just, just thinking then about opening channels, if, if the music can be seen as opening a channel. The universe also collapses, well we know it expands, collapses, why that title and how does that relate to, to the music? Well, um, the, the idea of being of, of, the, of the record is that there's, you know, that there is only this moment, and this, this is all that we have, which I, I don't think is an idea, I think it's, I think this is it, I think everything is exist, existing in, a, in the blink of an instant, right now, you know, and everything has always existed in this moment and always will. And it's like, you know, it's like a DVD. You know, you, you put the DVD into the player and you, you watch an entire film and you know, the, the narrative unfolds. But you take the DVD out of the player and it's all there, the beginning, the end, the middle. It's, it, and it's, I think of time as like that, you know. Well, I don't think of it. Brainy people think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brainy people think of time <laughs> that way. And I don't understand it, but I came... I came to do this through, you know, the, the, not not through brainy methods, and um, so the universe also collapses. Just for me, this this idea that, and in the in the explode, you know, the in, instant the universe is created, it's collapsed and disappeared, and everything that's happened in between, and everything that will happen, and everything that has happened, all is just in that single instant. And so the universe, it, we are now in the same moment of the inevitable collapse. <laughs> I like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, this is, this is more, more, more tricky, I suppose. The Elemental, uh, which I adore. To choose a radio edit Glad from it. To, to choose a radio yeah. edit from it. How did you do that? And is it something you were happy to do? Because it's quite difficult to stick, yeah. cut, it out, cut bits out. It was agonising. The controversial, oh, oh, oh. controversial <laughs> Elemental. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I mean, we ended up deciding on what... It's what, not a short radio edit, we should say. It's still, no, got, no, some, no. It's still got a chunk to it, but it's... You How long is the a full track? I can't remember. Seven, seven, seven minutes. minutes and, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, to get it down to f just four. 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 That was over some... There was some deliberation. There was a lot of, a lot of toing and froing. And, uh, and then what, what, what were the pros and cons, at least, in your mind? Um, well... Uh, in my mind, we needed something that was like a proper song structure so that's kind of where we ended up focusing in the end we and Carver's kind of felt that's what we needed which meant that the whole end section mm. that it goes into didn't get in there and many members of the band thought that was possibly <laughs> not the right I didn't know this so I do apologise yeah. no, 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 it's just it's and great, other people in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the outer gone <laughs> world were thinking well but you, you, you can't do that you've left yeah. it because it has this whole end section. I remember, there is only now, which is and a uh, big chant kind of uh, of the pumping riff, <laughs> and it was just like to, to sort of include that as well would have meant cutting out some verses or a chorus, and then it would have just been including like half a song from the beginning and a half of the ending. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose we just felt like, well, at least if we just do this fade, you. You get like the, like you said that sort of stru song structure, but you don't get the big coda. But there's, there could have been just as much an argument just to have, you'd have to start a song starting with just <laughs> well, being the coda. That. Just do that. Uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't consider that. No, no I, I don't just did it now. So. <laughs> oh, that. Maybe that's so, what yeah, you yeah, should yeah, have done. Yeah. No, um, uh, but yeah. So what it means is people just need to get the album and hear the. Because well, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's track two, which is the one I always get the title wrong. If I if I if, if I never I am ever, ever you. We always get that wrong. Which would fit in a very short uh, wire type length uh, single, like, and actually uh, taking a straw poll of other people in this room would have been a very popular uh, uh, radio edit. But we that was the original idea to release that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Single, yeah. And then because <laughs> lots of people said you got 
<laughs> you want to do the elementary? You want to do the elementary? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, I like the whole record. Yeah. I, I wasn't really, you know, we weren't thinking in terms of singles um, or anything. And But, you know, I just want people, you know, I want people to like the record. In, in 20 years of doing this, this one feels like, you know, there's, there's, every now and then you get a really, really special one. This really feels like this is a really special one, I think. Well, I think so. I think, and I think the Elemental was the right track. So I suppose everyone just wants more, don't they? Well, why? Why limit it to these pesky radio, these radio yeah, restrictions? Yeah, yeah. We should talk about journeys to Gong, really. Um, I think, because it, it's not necessarily music that's going to be played down mainstream media, mainstream radio, well, increasingly maybe more so. I'm guessing that everyone has to find their way to Gong. We're, we're on Six Music tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> is, is that, is six, is very six good, very good. Is that yeah. mainstream yeah, media? It's, it's, it's cool mainstream. Oh, is it, yeah. oh, is it cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been cool. Yeah. It's, for me, it's for people who like music. So that oh, really separates well, that it out difference. from most other radio stations. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, it, and it's played by people who actually enjoy the music yeah. that they're playing. Yeah. It's really nice. It's the only radio station I listen to apart from my own. Um, <laughs> So, Journeys to Gong, uh, Fabio, how, can you remember the first Gong music uh, you heard um, and what the circumstances were? How did you come to, to fall for it? Yeah, this was uh, when I was a teenager and I was 14 or 13 or 14, maybe 14. A friend of mine has a, he had a, a, an uncle that lives in France and brings an angel's egg for us. It was in 74, 75. Then I discovered that my dad, his boss, he was a gong fan in that time. <laughs> Crazy. And then he, he brought for me from France, because I live in Brazil, that that time it was very difficult to get albums. And he brought me Camembert Electric. And then I, I, I went into that kind of music. And since that time, since it was 15, and then I never escaped from gong anymore. Carvis, uh, your journey to Gong. How old were you? I um, I was probably about seventeen, I think. Um, seventeen? No, about seventeen or eighteen, and uh, I was, you know, heavily into cardiacs. And my cousin Arash, who's also a musician, said somewhat derisively, um, "Have you ever heard Gong?" And I said, no. He said, oh, you'd probably like them. They're like cardiacs, but more jazzy. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Sounds interesting, you know. And then I'd sort of heard of Steve Hillage because of the young ones. And his name always had this, it just, you know, Steve, it sounds, it just sounds wonderfully sort of esoteric and kind of strange. And I think that I'd, you know, I already like Hawkwind. And I, I just, you know, the name Gong had sort of gone round. I didn't really sort of, joined the dots really and then when I heard them I heard Angel's Egg and it just kind of like all oh, right okay this is this is totally this is totally the band for me and then you know and then I just sort of you know as you do when you're uh, on um, unemployment benefit and have uh, uh, go around the uh, record shops and just buy anything I could find by Gong second hand but particularly you know Camembert and the trilogy just, just knocked my head off you know and then Fish Rising and Green and Most Motivation Radio by Steve Hillage as well and, and Rainbow Dome music. As musicians, can you identify what the qualities were of the gong music that you first heard that opened the door to gong, if that makes any sense? Can you recognise what it was musically? That I think now I'm, I'm beginning to be aware of that. Now that we're... Uh, well, having, having to learn, you know, a lot of the early gong stuff when I first joined it ten years ago, I was kind of, I was astonished how complicated it all was. I kind of, I, I'd forgotten, you know. I mean, I, I loved it back when I was whatever eighteen. 19 so your fir first, first experience, first exposure. Uh, well, well, through Steve Village as well. For, well, well, for me, I, it was I had Steve Village on Rock Goes to College or something TV thing, and like it really intrigued me. And I, so I got into Steve Village first, and then through him. Uh, started, you know, like you and Angel Zeg and uh, yeah, just loved the spirit of it. Although I didn't get obsessed by it at that time, I kind of then went off onto other things. But um, uh, then when I ended up in the band, so well, being invited to join the band, I then had to suddenly 
get into working out all of these tracks and was just amazed how complicated it was. And yet when you listen to those early albums, they kind of make it sound easy. Yeah. Because I think they were just jamming all together, all, you know, for you know, days and days, weeks and weeks. That's all they did, just played together. And experimenting with different time signatures and, and then bringing in all kind of interesting you know, riffs and stuff. And they, they make it all sound so easy. And the, the idea of opening, uh, my thought of that doors get open through certain mm. musical phrases. Yeah. Is yeah, that, yeah. Does any of that go, yeah, okay, like I opening a window? That, you, can, you, can see, you can see how these things came together. Right. And, uh, and, and I think Pierre Merlin was probably, uh, you know, very influential in the way he was like, but play, I mean, he was a classical percussionist originally, and he, he wasn't really a drummer when he joined the band, and they, they were kind of, they kind of brought him on, you know, and you know, blossomed amazingly. And yeah, and it's just, yeah, lovely interplay, and, and they were like, I don't know, in the early 20s, they were doing this being incredibly creative and it's just I think the camera there it's the no keyboards oh, I, I love that well, well, well that was kind of a different yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. me it was the, what I, the the gong is just the strangeness of it in a, in a beautiful way there's just so I, 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 you know especially um in a lot of psycho, psychedelia but a lot lots of music I, um Certainly, the kind of prog music I just don't hear any strangeness at all of nowadays and it's like yeah. God, it seems to be there's a, you know, not in any kind of wacky or um, sort of contrived way, but just that, just something mm. utterly otherworldly and alien. And I've always sort of, I've thought of this as the bent path. And for, for me, that was a kind of epiphany I had when I was about 19. And also listening to things like, you know, Cardiacs and Stravinsky and sort of Voivod and um, Henry Cow. And then stuff that started happening in, in electronic music with like Orteca and all that. And it, I, I had this sort of realisation, sort of epiphany, that this is all the same thing. This, you know, whether it's Stravinsky or Orteca or Gong or Henry Cow, this is all the same thing. And mm. this is my path. This is, the, this is the bent path. And that's the road I've got to go on. This kind of just beautiful, otherworldly strangeness, but didn't sound contrived, didn't sound like trying to be cool. It was just celebrating its own... Yeah, otherworldliness, like psychedelia. Primal, it was maybe completely it's another primal, world. It yeah, yeah, it was. It was it all those, fundamental those funny yeah, intervals, absolutely. those funny intervals, and those jarring things. That some people are just like, "Fuck off!" For me, that was like, "Ah, oh, now you've got it." Those are my funny colours, you know. And and that was the and Gong was very much a part of that. Yeah. And so to have ended up sat between these two guys, purely from following the bent path, I never went looking for sort of money or opportunity just stuck with this sort of bed yeah. I ended up in cardiacs and I ended up in gong and I ended up meeting all the crazy people that I've, lud I've had a ludicrous life as a result of bent music well take, take, take the bent path as a cure uh, yeah. you, you're going to be going on the road with this album of course tour dates have been announced in the UK you're going to go further afield yeah, yeah more later in the year yeah. but, um, yes. but we'll, we'll be announcing that after this tour yeah, a lot, a lot going on, and then um, a lot going on next year as well. Um, I have to, I mean, I, I, it's a name that would be an extra draw for me as if I was in. Edwin, uh, su providing support uh, of Osric. Tell us about your relationship with him. He's a label mate now. We're on okay. K-Scope with, with Ed, and uh, they were very keen on the idea. When they suggested it, and it was like, fantastic. Yeah. We didn't really think he'd be up for it. We've just got a new album out, and uh, yeah, he's put a new band together to... Uh, to do the tour and uh, it's going to be great for really looking forward and on the subject of well, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying that I heard him when um, Osric played with Hawkwind in 1988 that gig I was telling you about in Plymouth and they were just amazing they were really really amazing and we, we hadn't heard kind of um, sort of stuff like that and that's before I heard Gong so that was another another way in because I was only 16 in 88 mm -hmm. And they just blew my mind, and I just I couldn't believe that guy's guitar player. He's and such I still a great, can't. great music. Oh, he's an incredible guitar player. Mm -hmm. And on the, on the subject of, of gigs, you mentioned it right in the beginning of our chat about China. And I think anybody, anybody from the West visiting China is going to have an extraordinary experience. I'd like to think that in this instance, not only would you have an extraordinary experience, but China, <laughs> the Chinese might also have an extraordinary experience having some exposure to gone. What, what was it like for both parties, you and the Chinese? Um, uh, extraordinary it was yeah, uh, we never expected to be invited to get an invite to play in Japan This uh, China even 
Yeah. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, that one, yeah. We've been to Japan as well. Yeah, that's China. Yeah, the Tomorrow Festival in China invited us over. Um, although we then had to jump, jump through many hoops. Uh, we, we get a whole list of things that we weren't allowed to uh, to talk about or, uh, or, or show. Sing about, yeah. Sing about. So that was uh, interesting. And because of that, we were kind of convinced we wouldn't actually get in. But they, but they allowed us through and... Uh, it was a very lovely, lovely festival. Interesting people playing and uh, lovely people running it. And, and, and the fans, I mean... Uh, oh, just incredible. Amazing. I mean, it was yeah. totally different to our usual crowd because so they haven't really had they haven't really had psychedelic bands in China. I mean, I think the previous year, Faust may have played this, this festival and then I think two or three years before yeah. that, Magma had played. Well, you got some great promoters. That's for I, sure. I know, brilliant. <laughs> and and the, I'd say the majority of the crowd was under 30. Yeah, um, this is a new thing for them. I yeah, for for the Chinese people, any rock rock and roll band is this more new things. So their and first taste of psychedelia, they're having it now. Uh, oh, it was wonderful, yeah, yeah. and we brought the full light show and the 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 crew and everyone. It was so well run, um, and we 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 did the full on you know gong experience, and it was just absolutely beautiful. But the people were just sort of beautiful from the moment we got there. It's a, it's a place called Shenzhen that I'd never heard of before. It's sort of two mile, two hours north of Hong an hour and a half of Hong Kong. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's incredibly clean. They're, they're, they're full of electric cars. And uh, I think it might be where they make a lot of sort of like computer stuff. It's like the sort of Silicon Valley. Yeah, it's kind of creatives. You know, we only really saw, creatives. we only really saw about a half mile radius of where we were staying and where the venue was. This whole, whole sort of festival was going on. But just the people were so beautiful and I was reminded, as if I didn't know it already, that, you know what, people, as far as I can tell, people are the same the world over. You know, people just want to get on with each other and you know, I am a utopian you know, and they just want to get on with each other, have a good time, find out about each other. And we, luck, we were really lucky to have two or three days before the show just hanging out and just going to this amazing hub, which was like this books shop, come record mm. store, come bar and cafe and we ended up doing a sort of improvising there one night <laughs> before the gig you know and so we really got to sort of know that the sort of people that were there and it's just governments that are assholes of course the people are everywhere are beautiful and i don't know what we expected but it was extraordinary and they were really really into it and pretty unre you know unrestrained crowd and yeah, was, yeah. singing along they knew that they were singing along with the new stuff and <laughs> really, really beautiful people, and I think there's, there's some footage of us on YouTube, and our, our response to it is absolutely sort of genuine, just this wave of extraordinary energy. And in fact, we've got a photo of us on the inner sleeve of the album. That photo is us, just as soon as we finish the set, just coming together and just looking at these extraordinary people and smiling, and that was the, the photo we used, because it just felt, it really felt like a kind of, God, this is... This was the whole point of picking up a guitar to do to do yeah. stuff like this to, to and it really felt like a sort of and I'm getting very enthusiastic. But it was one of those ah oh, these were this was the gig I was waiting for. When there was, it was about a 500 capacity venue, and when we came off stage, we were told that uh, there was half a million people streaming it live. <laughs> the <laughs> show we just yeah, done. Just, just the show, you know, China just, yeah, 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 man. The numbers are like, so different over there. It's just it was incredible. like it was like being in the Beatles. But with psychedelic, <laughs> <laughs> but with like really long. <laughs> Do you know? Just you know, Wig out. Thinking about the title again, and, and doorways and portals and universes, and you think the universe also understands, doesn't it? Well, yeah. You think about yeah, it. You can take some things that many people here would maybe struggle with, but the, the statistical density of it, or to borrow one of Mr. Zappa's phrases, and yet you can go somewhere like China, where their exposure to any kind of, uh, of music is going to be fairly limited and controlled outside yeah, yeah. their own culture. And yet you, you can connect like that. I think that, that says it all, really. Oh, yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, much. Matthew. Thank you.